This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from New York, the epicenter of the pandemic in the United States. As the global death toll from the coronavirus pandemic tops 15,000, with more than 450 deaths here in the U.S., alarm is growing about the safety of more than 37,000 people detained at immigration detention centers and private jails that contract with Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, where it's nearly impossible to avoid close contact and follow social distancing to stop the spread of the virus. Nearly half of those detained by ICE are accused of no crime other than civil immigration violations. ICE says there are no confirmed cases of coronavirus among detained immigrants at the facilities it runs, but at least one worker has tested positive at the Elizabeth Detention Center in New Jersey, who's a member of the medical staff. Meanwhile, two people held at the Hudson County Correctional Facility in New Jersey have tested tested positive. Like detention centers, the jail holds people detained for civil immigration offenses and is now on lockdown for two weeks. Immigrants at Hudson and two other New Jersey jails are now on hunger strikes over unsanitary conditions amidst the pandemic. This is part of a call recorded Friday with a man held in the immigrant detention at Essex County Correctional Facility. He's since been placed in solitary confinement. On Sunday, the group Never Again Action organized a protest with nearly 100 cars outside the Hudson County Detention Center to demand New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy release people being held there. <laughs> Never Again also held an in-car protest outside California Governor Gavin Newsom's home to call for the release of detainees. Governor Newsom, we are once again asking you, we are begging you to do the right thing, to release all those in ICE detention centers now, before it is too late. Release them now. There is no later. More than 3,000 physicians have signed a letter calling for ICE to release people from detention while their legal cases proceed, especially those who are over 60 or have medical conditions that put them at higher risk of dying from COVID-19. There's also growing concern about the spread of the coronavirus among immigrants detained by Customs and Border Protection at shelters for unaccompanied migrant children that are run by the Federal Office of Refugee Resettlement. The news outlet documented reports a staff member at Abbott House, a shelter in Irvington, New York, has tested positive for COVID-19 and placed all exposed migrant children held there in quarantine for 14 days. This comes as the Trump administration announced it'll shift its enforcement operations to focus on dangerous individuals. For more, we're joined by two guests. In Phoenix, Arizona, John Sedwig is with us. He is former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, during the Obama administration. He wrote a piece published Sunday by The Atlantic, headlined, I used to run ICE. We need to release the nonviolent detainees. It's the only way to protect detention facilities and the people in them from COVID-19. And in Los Angeles, we're joined by Angelica Salas, executive director of the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights in California, or CHURLA, which just led a national effort to stop immigration enforcement actions. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! John Sandweg, let's begin with you. You're generally in Washington, but you're in Phoenix, Arizona right now. Talk about what you are calling for. Well, look, the immigration detention centers really are vulnerable to the outbreak of a contagious disease. During my time at ICE and my time at DHS, 
We had several outbreaks of contagious diseases. The nature of these facilities is such that it's really impossible to engage in the social distancing that we're all practicing right now. So when you look at the population of ICE uh, and the, who's in those detention facilities, and you recognize that really only a small percentage pose any public safety threat, when you recognize that their immigration proceedings can continue, even if they're out of custody, and when you look at the thousands of ICE officers contract guards uh, and employees who have, who have to go to those facilities every day, who frankly are just as much at risk of catching COVID-19 because of their exposure to the facilities themselves, it seems just very commonsensical to me to say, let's go ahead and downsize the population of the detention centers dramatically, release these individuals. If you pose a threat to public safety, you stay in. Uh, meanwhile, the immigration court proceedings, the deportation proceedings, will continue as planned, and ICE will just monitor you from an out-of-custody perspective. It just seems commonsensical to me at this point. I mean, to say that um, there are no cases inside, in, on the outside, in the free world in the United States, we really have no idea how many people are positive uh, because of the massive lack of tests, let alone what's going on inside these refugee um, centers, these jails. Um, are you talking about thousands of people? And where are these detention centers? So the detention centers are scattered across the United States. And as you kind of alluded to earlier, they, it's really a hodgepodge of contract private prison run. That's probably the largest, you know, probably close to the largest uh, holder of ICE detainees are private prison companies that operate massive detention centers at, uh, under contract with ICE, uh, state and local jails across the country, and then a very small percentage are in actually federally owned facilities. Um, so they're scattered across the country. Oftentimes, they're mixed with the criminal population. And what's, what's strange about this is you're going to see some of these jails. This is, you know, across the country, courts and and uh, sheriff's offices are looking at their populations because they recognize the vulnerability in their jails. So they're letting crim criminal detainees out. But in some of those very same facilities, the ICE detainees are going to be remain locked up, even though they have not, in many instances, been charged with a criminal offense, much less convicted of one. I mean, they are being held pending uh, legal action. Talk about who these people are and what power ICE has. Sure. ICE has complete authority to release anyone from immigration detention. They have a significant parole authority, and they can release someone even if they fall under what's called mandatory detention under the immigration laws. But what you have in immigration detention is a mix. To be fair, there is a population there, people who are convicted of serious crimes and, in some cases, violent crimes. We're not talking about—I'm not talking about releasing those individuals. There are some individuals who pose a genuine public safety threat that need to be detained. But in immigration, it's different than the criminal system. We don't engage in this kind of risk analysis where we look at whether or not you pose a public safety threat or a dramatic flight risk. What we're looking at is whether or not you fall under certain categories under the immigration law that really aren't designed to evaluate someone's risk so much as they are just more almost, I wouldn't say arbitrary, but almost arbitrary categories where we say you are subject to detention and you are not. We're also probably looking at a lot of immigrants who are eligible to be released pursuant to bail, but just couldn't afford to post the bail. So, Unlike the criminal detention system, what you're really going to see here is a very high percentage of individuals who I don't think anyone, even some of the harder ICE officers, would look at the case and say, yeah, they generally pose a threat to public safety. These are people who got caught up in the immigration system and, for one reason or another, are detained. Uh, you know, and listen, one thing I want to be very clear about, I think there's a misconception. People who go through the immigration court process, the actual majority of them are not detained. They're being monitored by ICE. They might be under ankle bracelets or, electro, you know, they have to report on a monthly basis to ICE. Uh, so what we're talking about is just saying, let's let the immigration deportation proceedings continue. Nobody gets a free pass. Let's just get them out of custody, because it makes it a lot safer for them, but also makes it a lot safer for the ICE officers who have to go to those facilities every single day. And we're talking about how many people here, uh, what, 37,000 under ICE jurisdiction? The population fluctuates, of course, but generally speaking, ICE is operating about 40,000 detention beds right now across the country. I would say about 37,000 are in detention. Now, the administration's announcement that they're going to stop arresting and detaining people on the front end, new people, who don't pose a threat to public safety is a great start. They have to compliment the administration for that. But it doesn't really make any sense to do that and limit the flow of new people in if you don't also go ahead and discharge the people who don't pose a threat to public safety uh, who are already in your custody. And have you spoken to people in the Trump administration, having been a former head of ICE yourself? 
Well, I have casual conversations with people at the department, uh, but I have not engaged in any specific conversations about this. I will tell you, though, I, I know just from experience in dealing with similar outbreaks of infectious diseases, uh, nothing on the scale of this. Nothing is high profile of this, though. But really, the, the folks who are also deeply concerned about this are not just uh, the advocacy world or the immigrant rights community, but the officers themselves. These are the folks who have to go home every day to their families, and they have to work inside these facilities. And just as, it's just as important to them that the facilities be operated in as safe a manner as possible as, as it is to the detainees. I'm surprised, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if we hear something soon from the ICE officers' union or other officers themselves who also want to see similar measures taken to protect them. I want to bring Angelica Salas into the conversation, executive director of the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights in California, known as CHIRLA. Um, talk about John Sandwig's proposal, just release. He's saying uh, the overwhelmingly nonviolent detainees who are under ICE custody, because ICE, uh, people who are in civil detention, because uh, ICE has the supreme power simply to make that decision. Can you talk about that and also what it means to be um, a person with a violent record? Record. Aren't these people who have already served time in prison who are then put into uh, the system, the ICE system, to be deported? Uh, well, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, John that uh, we have to close these centers down. It, it is absolutely outrageous that everything in America has stopped. Um, our jails are releasing prisoners, and yet in our immigration detention centers, we still have people at risk of dying. It is imperative that um, these centers be shut down immediately. Um, and I think that, um, in my perspective, is that uh, we need to release everyone in those in those detention centers. Um, the uh, Congress has appropriated billions of dollars um, in order to run these centers. Um, my, uh, in addition, there's millions of dollars that have been allocated for alternatives to detention, so resources to actually allow individuals to be um, released. Um, and I want to remind everybody: these are mothers, these are fathers. These are human beings, and they should be treated no different than anybody else. So we're calling for an immediate shutdown of these detention centers. Um, individuals need to be released back to their homes. They have families um, whom they have to um, be with. Um, so our, our perspective is that during this time of crisis, once again, the immigrant community is being attacked, um, whether it's uh, on the enforcement side or in the detainee side. And I also want to tell everybody that um, as we have individuals who are fighting their detention and their deportation, on the other side, there's also immigration attorneys. And I, I, have, I um, have to tell you, I'm working with our immigration attorneys who are saying, what do we do? We'll be, we have a horrible choice to, to make. We have to go into immigration courts to defend people who are in detention so that they have their due process and they're not deported from this country at the same time they still have to put themselves out there um, to represent these detainees, to, to be able um, uh, to, to fulfill justice even in this moment. We have to fully close our immigration courts, and we have to release these detainees and protect everybody involved. So I also want to talk about the immigration attorneys um, who are still being her heroic during this time, trying to defend immigrants. Um, we just need to understand Immigrants are human beings, and they need to be treated with dignity during this time. They need to be afforded um, what every other human being deserves, which is a chance to live. At Sunday's coronavirus briefing at the White House, a reporter asked President Trump if undocumented immigrants can go to testing sites without fear of then being deported. Um, Vice President Pence said Customs and Border Protection has issued guidance that agents will not target emergency rooms or health clinics in search of undocumented immigrants, barring extraordinary circumstances. But this was Trump's response. The answer is yes, we will do those tests, because I think in that case it's important. Uh, I think that uh, if 
you could call, you could say illegal alien, you could say illegal immigrant, you could say whatever you want to use your definition of what you're talking about. We're all talking about the same thing. Uh, yes, we will test that person, because I think it's important that we test that person, and we don't want to send that person back into wherever we're going to be sending the person, whether it's another country or someplace else, because, you know, we're now bringing them right out of our country. But, yeah, we will test those people. We will test those people. It's important because we're sending them out of the country. Um, first, I want to ask John Sandwig and then Angela Casalas. Can you respond to what he just said, yes, so that we can deport them? Well, listen, <clears throat> this is a public health issue, just like the detention centers themselves. And I think it's for helpful to people to look at this, not only uh, but the health and safety of the undocumented immigrant or the detainee itself, but the public at large. If we have undocumented immigrants uh, in our communities who are scared to go get testing, who might be symptomatic and certainly might be contagious, and they are hesitant to go be tested because of fear that ICE is going to take them into custody, it doesn't just make that community unsafe, it makes all of us unsafe. So again, this is a very simple, common sense proposal, it seems to me, is that ICE needs to issue guidance, making it abundantly clear that individuals who go for testing or seek medical treatment are not going to be taken into custody. Now, the reality is this. ICE has no desire to take these individuals into custody. ICE is just as much scared of a breakout in one of their detention facilities as, uh, as is the immigrant community. ICE is going to stay away from anybody who's being diagnosed or tested or suspected of having COVID-19, simply because an outbreak is very difficult for ICE to handle internally uh, and logistically and exposes the ICE officers at risk themselves. Nevertheless, there's a fear in the immigrant community about ICE, especially in the Trump administration. And this is something that we did during natural disasters on multiple occasions, hurricanes and otherwise, is put out a statement saying, we're not going to take people into custody who are seeking you know, assistance. Something very similar needs to be done here, not just, again, for the safety of that community itself, but for all of our safety so that these individuals can be tested and go into quarantine if they are, in fact, uh, positive for COVID-19. And Angela Casales, if you could respond and specifically address children, I mean, who are separated all over this country, we don't even know the numbers right now and how they fit into this picture. Um, a cheerless perspective is that immigration enforcement needs to cease immediately. Um, there is no reason that any person going for testing um, should actually be afraid that immigration will somehow come in contact with them. At this moment, um, what we need to do is safeguard resources for this health crisis. Um, and so what we're asking for, number one, is that all immigrants, um, independent of their immigration status, be, have access uh, to testing that they also have access to the treatment if they are found um, to have the virus, um, that they are treated in the same way as any other human being in, uh, during this moment. I want to let listeners understand that across this country, immigrants, undocumented immigrants, don't have the same access to the resources available to others. So this is a moment in which we say, because we are all interdependent, um, where we all actually are dependent on, on, on other people's health health, for our own health, we need to make sure that immigrants have access to all the same uh, level of care. And that also means that we uh, increase resources to community clinics, which in many instances are places where the undocumented go for treatment. That is the first place that they will go. So we need to make sure that we also bolster up resources um, across this country so that uh, immigrants have the same, same level of care. Um, there should be no requirement requirement for residency, citizenship status, or any other kind of uh, request for information um, for immigrants. Otherwise, they're not going to go move forward. And I tell you this because we run an immigrant assistance um, hotline, and we're receiving these calls of individuals who are calling us just to make sure that they're able to move forward um, with testing. Um, the last thing I also want to say with this is that um, immigrants are also the ones that are being laid off all over this country who are losing their jobs, and they don't have access to unemployment benefits either. So whether it's access to care or access to just um, a, some level of economic support, they're completely left out. And I want to tell America, we are part of this country. Immigrants are part of this country. Um, we are the ones who who have taken care of your children, of your elderly, who are putting food on your table right now. And just do not um, forget us 
and make sure that immigrants are included in this in this moment of, of great peril for the rest of our country for the for our entire country. Finally, John Sandwig, let me ask you, as you see what's happening on the border, um, immigrants were afraid of uh, the U.S. government long before Trump. Do you have any regrets about um, w w your role, or would you have done anything differently um, I as director of ICE under the Obama administration? Of course, we know millions of people were deported then. Uh, Trump has now taken what President Obama, of the foundation he built and, uh, you know, taken it to a different level. Uh, but your thoughts on that? Well, look, we, we were focused. There is a role for immigration enforcement in this country. We need to enforce our immigration laws. We need to have border security in this country. The Obama administration's approach, however, was focused on those who pose a public safety threat and those who just recently compromised our border security, meaning people who had just crossed the border. I, I genuinely believe that is the right approach. Now. It took us a long time to get to where we got to at the end of the administration. I think that there were certain policies that we tried along the way to implement that focused approach, that more laser-like approach, uh, that were maybe a little slow or maybe were not the right policy, and it took us a few iterations to get it right. Uh, but we got it right. So, look, we are the immigration and customs enforcement plays a valuable role in this in this country in terms of protecting public safety and enforcing our immigration laws. It's about how you execute that enforcement mission. At the end of the day, ICE has the resources only to remove and or deport a fraction of the undocumented population. That that you know that fraction needs to be focused on those who pose a threat to public safety, those who violate our criminal laws, serious criminal laws. Uh, so no, I don't have regrets in terms of the policies of the Obama administration or the use of ICE itself. I just think it's unfortunate today that ICE has become a political tool. It's unfair to the officers at ICE itself. It gives the agency a terrible reputation, makes it very hard for them to execute their public safety mission. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that immigration enforcement and the agency itself get used as a political pawn here. Uh, and it's unfortunate to the immigrant communities that we're taking this more arbitrary, randomized approach and going, wasting our taxpayer resources going after individuals who pose no threat to public safety, and who've probably been here a long time uh, and have U.S. citizen family members. I, I, that approach itself is very uh, short-sighted. And Angelica Salas, 30 seconds. Um, I just want to say that we have to act now. Uh, people will die if we do not take action. Immigrants need to have the same access to all type of health care. Um, we this is a moment in which we have to shut down these detention centers. We have to shut down all these um, centers in which children are being housed. Um, if we are to uh, save lives, uh, we have to not forget the immigrant community. We want to thank you both so much for being with us. Angelica Salas, executive director of the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights in California, and John Sandweg, former director of ICE under Obama, now calling for the release of thousands in immigration detention in the United States. When we come back, we go to emergency room physician, former Baltimore Commissioner of Health, Dr. Lena Wen. This is Democracy Now! Stay with us.